Hi, it's Gary with Successful Gardens, and today I'm going to walk you through the simple steps of transplanting a house plant. This particular plant I've neglected, or so my wife tells me. She actually thought it was dying, and I just reassured her it's not dying, it just needs to be transplanted. And so I've been telling her that for the last six months. This is a China doll now. In, in the video, it probably looks bigger than what it is, but you can see the neglect that I have given it. You can see all those dry leaves. That's why my wife thought it was dying. But what this particular plant has done and why it needs to be transplanted is with those dry leaves, that's one of the telltale signs of a plant that has become root bound or there's so many roots in that pot that any type of water that you're giving it just runs through. And so just for a simple look, I'm gonna see if I can carefully pop this pot off and show you how, oh wow, how root bound this plant is and because it's not coming out very easily it is definitely another reason why I know it is root bound okay I just loosened up that pot and you can see all of these fibrous roots and if you look at the bottom there's lots and lots of thick roots not all plant roots grow the same and this particular one um, it's a healthy bunch of roots, but they're so tight. And so they're forcing all the potting soil out. So when you water it, water just drains right through it. And, it, and there's no potting soil or regular soil to hold the moisture in to feed the plant. So with that, the plant becomes stressed, leaves die. Um, I'm currently watering this particular plant about three times a week because the water just goes through on a constant basis. So I could have saved myself a whole bunch of misery by transplanting this six months ago. So what do we need to transplant a plant? First off, you need a bigger pot. Um, a pot that has ample drainage. So you can see this drain hole right there. And, but with that, you'll also want to make sure that you have a saucer to catch any water that runs through. And then you need to have some good potting soil. What's the difference between the potting soils? You can have regular potting soil. This says is ready to use potting soil. There's an organic potting soil. 99% of all potting soil is organic. So organic is a catchphrase. However, there is differences. So that's when you want to make sure that you're reading the, ins the ingredients of what your potting soil contains. Regular potting soil is going to contain peat moss, vermiculite. Um, these little roots are all part of the potting soil or the, the peat moss that has been harvested. And there might be some pieces of of bark um, or wood chunks in there. So what that does is it allows for drainage um, so that the water can, can drain through. You want to always use a high quality potting soil. Now, those are all organic material. With this particular organic potting soil, okay, it contains all natural potting mix with earthworm castings, microtone, which is mycorrhizae, alfalfa meal, kelp meal, and feather meal. Those are all organic ingredients. This is a, an excellent potting soil, as is this fertilome potting soil that I actually like to use myself. With the potting soil, I put my potting soil into a larger tote. That way I can add water to it. I can mix it up and pre-moisten the potting soil. If you were to open up a bag of potting soil, it would be really dusty. I like to just put my potting soil in into a tote, add water to it. That way I can just work with the potting soil right outside of, outside of the bag and I'm not 
getting too dusty. And then now I can just go ahead and fill up my pot. I fill it up about three quarters way so then I can work with it, prep it for transplanting the, the plant into an existing pot. Now, let's talk about pots. The rule of thumb for transplanting houseplants is increasing the size of your pot by no larger than two inches um, wider than what you existing than what the existing plant is. When you have a root bound pot or plant, um, if we were to just go up to that that two inches size larger, sometimes those plants will quickly outgrow that size pot. Um, just depends on how aggressive your roots are. And so this particular pot, I actually increased the size about four inches. And so you can see that they're good size difference. Um, allows for, there I have a drainage hole in the bottom. It will have drainage. Um, it's a loose soil. So I don't have to worry about um, this plant becoming waterlogged. And that's a problem with um, if you go too large of pots is that the plant or the existing roots of your transplanted plant, the roots won't be able to absorb all that water and human nature is to either overwater a plant or underwater a plant. And the plant will always tell you the difference uh, just by, here again, dry leaves is an indicator of not enough water. You can see this new growth right there. Um, and this new growth right here on those leaves right there, um, they're crinkling, they're, they're under stress. And so this plant definitely has been telling me for a while that it needs to be repotted. So, so I have the potting soil ready. What I want to do with my plant before I pot it is actually clean off some of these dead leaves already with the china doll. And this is what this particular flower plant is, is a china doll. These little bracts of flower or of leaves um, will just quickly come off and it will just clean up really nice. You don't want to force anything. If I need to make some snips or clean up some bigger stems, I can really, I can do that quite easily. All right, it looks like most of all the brown or dying leaves are off. We will remove it out of the pot. But because these roots are, you can see how they have grown around the edge of the pot. What I want to do is what's called root pruning. Take a sharp knife. When you're scoring the roots, you don't need to cut them deeply. What you just want to do is make a couple of cuts just like this. And what that does, you can see how that's actually loosening up those roots. And that will allow for the roots to start growing out and filling the pot. And so if we didn't, these roots would actually kind of just kind of stay in this little root ball and just stay happy as a clam in this pot of soil. All right. So with the pot, this is the pot that I took the plant out of. I'm just going to make a kind of like a little hole down in that pot or in that potting soil. And then just plop that potting, that new plant in there. You're transplanting this plant into a new pot and you're adding the soil. You don't want to bury the root crown. You don't want to add a lot of soil to that. You want to maintain that that soil level in there and so because if you were to add all this potting soil up and around the stems or the stalks of the plant um, there's a very good chance that you will have 
some rotting um, going on. Those, those stalks or those stems aren't used to that constant moisture around it uh, because they have always been up and above the soil. And so you want to be very careful in doing that. All right, so now here we have a newly transplanted China doll. Even though I, I planted with pre-moistened potting soil, I wanna add a little extra, especially right there in that crown, um, so that it has plenty of water. When using that organic potting soil with the fertilizers in there, um, you don't need to add any extra fertilizer to your plant. Too much fertilizer will burn those freshly cut roots, those new roots, those f exposed roots. And so you wanna be careful and, and you can actually do more damage in transplanting um, if you fertilize too heavily. When you use a regular potting soil that doesn't have any additional um, fertilizers to it, um, I like to use an all-purpose um, water-soluble fertilizer. This is that blue kind that you just add to your water. It's a blue powder. Um, this particular one is a balanced fertilizer. It's a 20-20-20, so there's equal amounts of nitrogen, um, phosphorus, and potassium in there. We have now successfully transplanted my wife's favorite houseplant. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you've learned something. And again, if I can ask, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, this is Gary with Successful Gardens, and remember, Let's get growing.